The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. The Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote, Christianity is like a medicine that if taken in half a dose, we get sicker. Think about that. Christianity is like a medicine that if taken in half a dose, we get sicker. We've started Lent. 40 days when the church tells us, slow down, take a deep look in the recesses of our souls. But what are we looking for? What are we supposed to be focusing on as we go through these 40 days of Lent? Today's gospel gives us our direction. Mark tells us that immediately after Jesus was baptized, that the Spirit drove him into the desert where he remained for 40 days. Now Jesus did not meander into the desert. It wasn't like he took a walk one day and he looked up from his iPhone and said, I'm in the desert. It says he was driven to the desert. He went there because he had a mission and a purpose. So what about you? Have you meandered into Lent? Have you floated into Lent like you're in a boat with no oars, just going along wherever the current happens to take you? Or is there a purpose to your Lent? Most spiritual writers believe that when Jesus went into the desert for those 40 days, he was praying and he was fasting to make certain that he was in absolute communion with his father. He desired to take the full dose of the father's medicine so that he could accomplish everything that the father wanted him to accomplish in his earthly ministry. This past week, I was blessed, blessed to hear the story of Cardinal Francis Tuan, who was the Archbishop of Saigon, Vietnam, when the communists took over. The communists arrested him on August 15th, 1975, and he spent the next 13 years in prison. They kept him in solitary confinement for nine of those years. Nine years. Can you imagine that? Nine years in solitary confinement. The conditions he faced were horrible. And I mean horrible. They put him in a cell. It was so small he could neither lie down nor stand up straight. There was no window, no circulating air. And you can imagine how hot it was in Vietnam. The only ventilation was a rusty, insect-infested drain in the floor. In spite of the insects, at times the cell got so hot that he had to put his face against the drain just to breathe. There was a single light that hung from the ceiling and his captors would either leave the light on for months at a time or they would leave the light off. Total darkness for months at a time. They fed the archbishop food that was extremely salty so he'd get very thirsty and he'd beg for water. And the guards would come and give him lots of water to drink, so he would have to urinate a lot. 
And since there was no place in his cell, he would just have to relieve himself on the floor. Can you imagine how much his cell must have stunk? The heat of Vietnam and no circulating air. Every few days, a female guard would open up his cell and make him undress. She would hose him, him and his cell down. And as she was hosing his naked body, she would call him all kinds of vile names. She would say things like, look at you, look at you. You call yourself a bishop, but just look at you. Pure humiliation. The archbishop said he felt desperate, completely alone, abandoned. How could someone possibly survive in this environment and not go crazy? But something amazing happened. As a prisoner, he not only maintained his sanity, his faith deepened and blossomed. How did he do it? How did he find the strength to not go crazy or lose his faith? How did he keep his heart from being hardened? How did he not build up resentment and hatred? How did he still feel loved and cared for? Cardinal Juan wrote this, the only necessary thing is prayer. He wrote that his prayer became very simplistic and during his imprisonment, there were long periods he was unable to pray spontaneously. So he would pray the Our Father, Hail Mary, and the prayers of the mass that he had memorized. And he wrote the following while he was in solitary confinement. I've spoken much in my lifetime, and now I speak no more. It's your turn to speak to me, Jesus. I am listening to you. When they arrested the archbishop, the only thing he brought with him were the clothes on his back and a rosary. One of the few things that he asked for was some medicine for his stomach. Well, his relatives understood exactly what that meant, so they brought him a little medicine bottle with a label on it, and it said, medicine for stomach illness. And what was in the medicine bottle? It was wine, so the archbishop could offer the mass. And they also smuggled some hosts in the battery compartment of a small flashlight he was allowed to bring in. So every day, the archbishop would put just three drops of wine and a drop of water in the palm of his hand, and a host, and he celebrated the Mass. He said, these were the most precious Masses of my life. He said, if you lack everything, or you've lost everything, but still have the Blessed Sacrament, you actually still have everything. When the archbishop was asked, what's your secret strength that enabled you to survive that prison? You know exactly what he said. He said, the strength that empowered me was that of Jesus Christ. After a while, they came, when they came to hose him off and humiliate him, he would say, thank you. Thank you for cleaning me off. I'm sorry I'm in this condition. And with that, there was a freedom he was able to love his guards. And often the guards would ask him, don't you hate us? He would say, no, I love you. I will always love you, even if you wanna kill me. Why do you love us, they would ask. Because Jesus taught us to love, as if everyone is our own brother or sister. It's a very difficult concept to understand, but if, if I do not love you, I am not worthy to be called a Christian. They said he was always smiling, no matter what they did to him. Many of the guards were converted. The government saw that if they left the guards with him too long, he would build a relationship with them and contaminate them. And being around him, the other Catholic prisoners became true disciples. And in the midst of their inner storm, they too experienced peace. He was released in 1988, but in 1991, the communists banished him and he spent the rest of his life at the Vatican in the office of peace 
and justice. He died in 2002. They smuggled some of his writings while he was in prison. They're collected and it's called a book called The Road of Hope, a gospel from prison. Hearing this amazing witness of faith, it kind of makes giving up chocolate for Lent seem a little silly, doesn't it? My brothers and sisters, Cardinal Twan understood the truth of Kierkegaard's statement. He knew that Christianity is like that medicine and it's only gonna heal us and give us life when we take the full dose, when we take it all. He knew that to be an authentically Christian person is to take the full dose that requires total and complete surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ over every aspect of our lives. Kierkegaard spoke a powerful truth. Christianity live in partial doses just makes us sicker. God wants to do a great work in your life. He wants to do a great work in all of our lives. God wants, he wants you, he wants all of us to perform signs and wonders in a dark world that just seems to get darker. Lent is our time to see if we've been living those partial doses of our Christian faith, only to watch ourselves and the world around us get a little sicker. Jesus set the pattern for us. Jesus, God himself, took 40 days, just like Lent, to completely abandon himself into his Father's will, to show us the way to be all in as his disciples. And that's exactly what our, what our prayer, and what our fasting, and what our almsgiving is meant to do for us this Lent. Don't go through the motions, or worse, just blow off Lent as something irrelevant to your life. Use this time. Lent is our time. Use those time-tested disciplines of praying more, fasting from whatever, and giving alms to whatever cause, something that hurts, so that in doing that, we discover first what those barriers are that are holding us back from taking the whole dose, from giving our lives fully to Jesus. What are those barriers? And as you discover what they are, then ask God for the grace to help you root every one of them out of your life. Do everything in your power to be all in with Jesus. That's what Lent is all about. Let Cardinal Twan be your inspiration of what a life lived in that radical way can look like and the impact it can have on the people around you. So this Lent, that's all. Ask the Holy Spirit to set our hearts afire with a zeal to live with a single purpose, and it's this, to do the will of the Father as we grow in holiness as Jesus' disciples.